Time, time. So first and foremost, we're going to give Kol Halo Yahweh Bahashim Hamashiach Yahweh Shah for giving us the spirit and power to come out here week in and week out to prophesy the downfall of America, Babylon the Great, and to tell the people or the public that this place is going down pretty soon, and to uplift and wake up our people, which is you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right. and let you know that you are the Israelites of the Bible and you got to repent. For the remission of sins, if you want to be forgiven for your sins, you have to repent in these last days. Time is running out. Time is running out. Right? Yeah. What? This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 8. Bring it out. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Guys, so, and that's what we come out here to do. We follow the same path of our righteous forefathers. We come out here and get the understanding of the book and to show you what's to come to pass in these last days so you won't be cut off guard, man. So give me 2 Ezra chapter 15. It said, read it distinctly and give their sense of the scriptures on what they say. Because everybody don't understand the Bible, but people want to understand what's going on in these last days and why the things are happening the way they are happening. When the Bible has the full understanding of why it's happening, because wickedness has grown in the earth. It has polluted the earth. And the wrath of the Most High God is about to burn this place up. Whether you're listening or whether you're not, it doesn't matter, man. The Most High God's judgment is on its way. So you black Hispanics and natives need to repent for the remission of sins. Second Ezra 15 and 1. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 15 and verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. You see that? He says, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. You black Hispanics and Native American descent, we are here to speak the words in your ears to let you know how close we are to the end. To let you know what the key, no, you are the kingdom of heaven and you have to build the kingdom of heaven up in these last days by repentance. Repentance is how you build the kingdom of heaven up, man. Go ahead. It say, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper. For they are faithful and true. So if you got a problem with me bringing out the Bible, first and foremost, you got a problem with the Most High God, man. Because he says, write these words in this book. He says, for they are faithful and true. He says, I'm going to tell you what to say. I'm going to tell you what to say in these last days. And there's nothing good that the Most High said for according to the last days, man. That's why we're telling our people to repent, showing them how to repent in these last days. You got that? Second Ezra is one and four. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 1, and verse 4. Bring it out. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh -huh. Go thy way and show my people their sinful deeds uh -huh. and their children their wickedness, which they have done against me, that they may tell their children's children, because the sins of their fathers are increased in them, for they have forgotten me and have offered unto strange gods. And that's why you have the prophets, the apostles, and the processors after them telling us of our wicked deeds. And we are here to tell our people of their wicked deeds because we are the children. And we're going to teach our children on how to be righteous according to the Most High God in these last days, man. Let's keep going. Verse 7. And not I, even he that brought them out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. See? That's one thing that we have forgotten, that we actually have our own God and he's delivered us out of the land of Egypt. He hopes on the land of Egypt because it was a great miracle that all nations have a history of. All nations have a history of Moses in Egypt, man. The, and the Israelites being delivered through the Red Sea because it was a glorious miracle that the Most High performed. That's why the Most High harps on that, right? And the other captivities that he's delivered us out of, right? Go ahead. But they have provoked me unto wrath and despised my counsels. Pull thou off then the hair of thy head and cast all even upon them. For they have not been obedient unto my law, but it is a rebellious people. But it is a rebellious people. Hey, and this is why he gave us who the world calls Jesus Christ. So that we can be forgiven for the sins that we could not be given, forgiven for under the first covenant. And this is your opportunity to repent for the remission of sins, man. Or you're going to die in your sins. Like who the world calls Jesus Christ said, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach said, you're going to die in your sins if you don't repent. For the remission of sins. 
Straight up. Right. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18 and verse 30. Here we go. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord, God, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so your iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from your all, from from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make your make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore turn yourselves, yeah, turn yourselves and live. So the Most High God is telling us again, all throughout the Bible, to repent. A lot of people don't even know how to repent. Like if we ask the basic Christian here in Oklahoma City, how do you repent? They don't know how. And the reason why they don't is because the pastors in the churches have failed us. They have scattered the sheep of the nation of Israel and have not told them the truth about the Bible. All they want is the money so that they can build a bigger house for themselves. It's for their selfish gain. So we need to know in these last days how to truly repent. We need to know in the last days how to truly repent. Hey, and and we're, we're teaching you for free. So come and learn how to truly repent for your sins. Not only do we not know how to repent, but we don't even know what sin is. A lot of people will say, it's just doing something bad. You don't even know what good and bad is. The Most High God has to tell you what good and bad is. So come and learn this information for free while you got the opportunity. Hey, well, time is running out too, because time is ticking. Whether you want to believe that or not, eventually, when you don't see the prophets out there on the highways and byways no more, the Most High God is done speaking, because guess what? We are his spokesmen. And that's just what it is, man. You can look at us however you want to, but we got this word of God and we can teach it. Right? So, uh, what did I? Uh, two. Two and fourteen. Can you get it in the uh, Amplified too? Go ahead. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 2 and verse 14. Uh -huh. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. Right? And this is, back then, of course, it was, pro you don't see pastors a lot in the Old Testament, but you see prophets. So we link this up to 2024 AD. The prophets, the pastors, they have seen vain visions. Everything they see has nothing to do with prophecy. It has nothing to do with edification to help you repent in these last days. It's all bull crap, man. Go ahead. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. You see that? That's the, that's the job of the pastor, the prophet, is to show them their sins, their iniquities, so that they can be delivered out of captivity. We are in captivity, our people is destroyed, and we need salvation. But first you have to repent for the remission of sins, man. Everybody, all our people desire to be in a better place where they draw righteousness, which is the kingdom of heaven, of course, ultimately, because that's the only place you don't go when you repent. But they don't know how to get there, man. They, they don't. <laughs> they don't know nothing, man. Our people is just destroyed, man. Following after the way of heathens, man. People that had does not have our best interests. Right? You got that? I want it. Yeah. Uh, this is Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 14 in the Amplified Version. Your prophets have seen, suck it, your prophets have seen for you false and false and foolish visions, and they have not exposed your wickedness to restore you from your captivity by teaching you to repent. You see that? That's something they haven't been doing. And that's why we come out here to the highways and byways, but guess what? We hate it for that. People don't like us. People don't even like to talk to us no more. I remember when we used to come out here when the world started first coming out in my town. When I came out here, people didn't know about Israelites. They sat here and they learned, but now they, they, they look at us with, with wrath, with hatred, man. Like they do not want us out here because they understand the objective now. They understand that like the, uh, captain, like the captain said, man, the law is a mirror, and it shows them their wickedness. And they're looking at an ugly image in that mirror, man, and they got to change that. All right, go ahead. God, to repent, it's lucky, to restore you from your captivity by teaching you to repent. Uh -huh. 
by they, uh, it's like it, but they have seen and declared to you false and misleading oracles. Yes, sir. Allowing our people to dwell in homosexuality, allowing our people to shave off their beards, allow our people to not have their fringes on. All kind of manner of uh, sin and wickedness. Can you get go back to limitations? Yeah. You got something? Go ahead. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 3. Bring it out. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So if you're following after the doctrine of uh, Christianity, Islam, whatever you may be following, if you're not obeying the commandments of the Most High God and having faith in the name of His Son and following after His teachings, you are in idolatry, right? You are committing a sin worthy of death, and, and you got to repent and come back to His laws. That's our objective, man, is to come out here and teach our people how to repent and to teach them prophecy. That's our objective. Got it? Go. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 6. Bring it out. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom that was overthrown in a moment and no hands stayed on her. You see that? He said our punishment was worse than what he did to Sodom, man. Now let's see the punishment that our people had to go through and pretty soon they're going to have to go through again. Let's drop down to verse 9. Verse 9. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through the want of the fruits of the field. And we know why our people uh, depend on America, love America, because it looked like it's an ever, it's an abundance, an everlasting thing, uh, supply of things coming in and out of this place. People don't look at America as actually going into a famine. People don't look at America as you know, pestilence actually overtaking everything when this whole country is shut down. People don't look at military actually shutting this place down. But this is what we come out here to teach them according to what Yahweh said, man. The Most High God said that these things was going to come to pass. And he said his words do not come back void. They are going to accomplish what he pleased, what he want them to accomplish, when he want them to accomplish. All right, keep going. Well, matter of fact, let me get one more. Let me get uh, Ezekiel 14 and 21 right quick. What? The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, verse 21. Bring it out. For thus saith the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. So the Most High, knowing that the Most High God doesn't change, guess what's going to happen in these last days, man? Guess what's going to happen? The same four-sword judgments and more, man. The plagues of Egypt is coming to the modern-day Egypt, according to Revelation 11 and 8, man. And that's, we come in the war and our people repent for the remission of sins. You have to repent in order to be forgiven for your sins, right? Let's go back to that. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 10. Bring it out. The hands of the pitiful women have sought in their own children. You hear that? It says the hands of the pitiful women have sought in their own children. The most I made it so bad out there that women was pulling their own children. People, women does not, they don't imagine that here in Oklahoma City. They don't imagine that in the United States at all because they see food coming in and out of this place. They see abundance of food. They can go anywhere they want and get something to eat, man. So they don't see things like this happening from the Most High God. And this actually being ordained by the Most High God. You need protection in these last days to be protected from these kind of things. Right? It says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time. That's the only thing that's going to keep you stable in these last days. And we know somebody's listening. Listen to the words of the scriptures, man, as they come out. And repent for their missing the sins. Go ahead. They were their meat in the destruction. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 10. Uh, no. The hands of the pitiful women have sought in their own children. Uh -huh. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. Uh -huh. The Lord have accomplished his fury. He have poured out his fierce anger and have kindled a fire in Zion and it have devoured the foundations thereof. You see that? 
So all of this is a result of the anger and the wrath of the Most High God, man. That's some scary thing. You don't want to be on that side of the fence dealing with the Most High God. Because in the scriptures, it also says he know how to deliver the righteous and reserve the wicked to the day of judgment. And that's what he going to do. He know who he want to save via angels. The angels are already protecting the men and families that are already set up to be saved. Right? And the majority of America, they don't know. They don't care even know the Bible. Nobody's protesting on how the governments right now is planning to uh, ban the Bible, make it, uh, the Bible illegal. I just seen an article on that today. They're trying to make the Bible illegal. Right? That's what this pro-Palestine thing is being set up about. Free Palestine because they have a problem with those people. So they're trying to connect it with the Bible and say, well, we got to put away the Bible so that these people, so we can balance everything out and everybody can be equal. That's what they're doing, strategizing it. Their goal is to get rid of the Israelites and get rid of the words of the Israelites. All right, go ahead. You got something? This is Ecclesiastes 3, verse 15. That which have been is now, and that which has to be have already been. And God require of that which is past. See, the things written aforetime was written for our learning. So all these accounts of these perilous times, like eating the flesh of your sons and daughters, the sons eating the flesh of their fathers, the Bible's being burned, they're coming back on the earth, and we're seeing it unfold as we speak. But people continue, you know, in the pleasure of this world, and they ignore it. That's going to be on you. It's, it's all your fault. Whatever happens to you and your house, man, for the men, that's, that's all your fault. You did that to yourself and to your house, man. You did that. Go ahead, King. Yeah, like, when, uh, we got to remember why we okay. started having these curses in the first place. Like, for example, when you hear these stories about people eating their, their kids, right, and you're like, dang, those innocent people. Well, they weren't innocent. The whole reason we went into slavery is because we was in idolatry. So it's you, when you're seeing the judgment play out, you feel bad, but don't don't be deceived because those people openly, when they had a chance to repent, refused, and they, and openly they they went against God and went into idolatry. Right, and this is why it's up to you to repent from that, repent from idolatry, repent from all your wickedness that you have been committing. Right, and you have to. It tells you in Leviticus 26 that you have to. You have to ask for forgiveness for the iniquity of your forefathers, right? It's on, Captain. All right, this is First John chapter two and verse fifteen. This is First John chapter two, verse fifteen. Love not the world. What did it say? Love not the world. One more time. Love not the world. The Bible says to love not the world. Come on. Neither the things that are in the world. And we just saw an example of one of our brothers walking by. I couldn't tell if it was a guy. Or a girl. And the reason that's a this is a serious and sad situation. You can't tell what gender is what. He had high heel boots on. I think it was he. The only reason why I think it was a he because he had a little facial hair. That's it. Other than that, his whole he had a feminine mentality. His whole demeanor was feminine. How he was walking. How he was walking and everything, man. But read that one more time. It says, "Love not the world." And this is the thing that we're in. All people have a tendency to love this world. And because they love this world, they fall into a wicked abominations. They turn, they, they, they love this world and they fall into wicked, abominable acts. And it's disgusting. And it's horrible, man. And it's going to leave a stain, not only on you, but on your generations to come. If you was to have a generation. It's going to leave a stain on you, man. Read that one more time and keep going. It says, love not the world. The Bible says to love not the world. Come on. Neither the things that are in the world. How many people love this world? How many people love America and the things that are in America? Majority of our people love America, man. Right? Make America great again. Let's not get started on that. A lot of our people love America. They love this world. The Bible clearly tells you not to love the world. It says, neither the things that are in the world. Come on. It says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Wait, I bet you if I pull anybody up here, they're going to say, I love God. But the Bible in the New Testament just said, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. That's what the Bible just said. Now, how many people actually believe the Bible? It's very few people that believe the Bible. 
Yeah, I love God. That's what they will politic. That's what they will say. But the Bible says the love of the Father is not in him. Why? Because you choose to love this world. Because you choose to love America and its ways. You choose to do that. You don't stand against it. All the wicked abominations, right? The 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 kidnapping and the child abductions and the uh, the uh, homosexuality, those type of things. You're not standing against it. You're not speaking against it. That shows that you love this world. Read that for me one more time. God, it says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So the love of God is not in you. You cannot even express God's love, right? You can't even express it. You might say it, but your actions are far from God. Come on. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. It's of the world, and that lust is now in you because you have a strong desire to a lust of the flesh. That lust is now in you. Right, and you are far from God. The only thing that you can say or show us any any uh, inkling of God is by your words. You couldn't show it by your actions. You don't even know how to show us by your actions that God loves you or that you love God because you don't know God's laws and you're far from God. Come on. God, James 1 and 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. When sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. It bringeth forth death, man. Maybe you're not afraid to die, man. Maybe that's the situation. Right? In order for you to live, you got to turn away from sin. But do you know what sin is? Can anybody tell me what is sin according to the Bible? We're not going to get anybody stepping up right now. Nobody's going to step up to be able to tell us. Hey, and people been pacified by sin. You know, we hear this term a lot. Uh, we're all going to die someday. They've been pacified by that to the point where they're not even afraid to die no more, man. When the scriptures talk about us having eternal life, like I brought this eye, this is the generation where we see everlasting life. But people ain't even ready for that because they've been so programmed to believe that everybody's going to die, man. And they want that, that YOLO, you only got one chance, you only got one life to live. So, and that the whole reason why is because they're following after the ways of this world. you got to stop following after the world and come and follow after the one who created all spirits, which is the Most High God. Come and learn what he wants you to know. And he's telling you right here in the New Testament that he doesn't want you to love this world because it's full of wickedness and abominations, right? And you're going to be filled with the lust of the flesh. And after that's done, like I said in James, you will have death. Death will be in you. You will die. Oh, yeah, James. John, it's a lot of stuff. First John, did you want to do that? Yeah, I didn't know. So, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and 1. For the ungodly said reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious, and in the death of man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. So they don't even consider Yahweh Shah Hamashiach's death, burial, and resurrection because they have ungodly spirits, man. They only think about their life, how it's short and tedious, and they want to live, the, like the captain said, they want to live the yellow life according to how they want to. They want to fulfill all the lust of the flesh while they're here for this short period of time, man. Uh, first John 2. First John 2 and 15. So, all right, God. First John chapter 2 and 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. Hey, so, and a lot of times, people are not going to take this seriously until they actually see a demon in their room. Right? They see a spirit in their room, then they're going to have a whole change. They're going to have a whole mindset. Right? They're going to change their whole mind. Like, you know, I believe in God. I love God. They're going to try to call on Jesus. They're going to try to call on Jesus once that spirit, once that demon that they've been feeding this whole time is right there sitting on your bed. Right? I, 
Right. Uh, I seen this video with this dude. He was like, man, I felt a because uh, he was he was a uh, he was he was playing with uh, familiar spirits, and he felt a uh, a heavy like somebody sitting down on his bed. He said he was terrified. Then he started believing, and then he started believing in God. Right? Why did Why did it take so long for you to believe in God? Some people don't even have that opportunity to. Right, and doing that wrong. It's, it's the God he want to believe in. Right, to comfort his spirit. That's what it is. That's what it is. Comfort. But hey, but hey, they don't know how to please the Most High God at the end of the day. They don't know. And what we're doing, we're really coming to talk to all people to get away from this world because this world don't have nothing to offer you. Go ahead. It says verse seventeen, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. If you do the will of God. And it binds forever. Our people don't even know what will, the will of God is. Man. So we got to come. We're telling you all of these things so that you can come and learn what the will of God is, how to repent, what is sin, right? How to get right with the Most High God so that you can have eternal life. Let me get this in the uh, last precept. Proverbs chapter three and verse thirty-one. It's the book of Proverbs chapter three, verse thirty-one. And it reads. But if he be found, he shall restore. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. It says, envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. How much further ahead will we be if we just follow that one scripture? If we could just follow that one. Let's just meditate and, and chew on that one for like a month. If we just if we just sat there and meditated, how far advanced we would be as a people, right? How dangerous, in a good way, would we be when we find the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are able to come together, and they're not choosing their oppressors, bro? We would be we would be dangerous, man. We would be a phenomenon. It would be a power on the earth that has never been seen before, right? If you can get the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, because this is what the Bible's talking about, a little, very little people actually know that the Bible is talking about blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians, right? A lot of people don't know that, but it is. It's telling us that we got to come together. And if it, read that for me one more time. You still got it? Book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Go ahead, King. Envy thou not the oppressor. It says, envy thou not the oppressors. Wherever you were, wherever land that you were carried to, it says to envy thou not the oppressors. Why? Because you're going to fall into their sin. You're going to fall into their iniquity. You're going to start. What, what is what is America? Uh, we let's just play it. We're going to say it pl bluntly. White Americans are known for school shooters. That's not a. This is not a secret in America. We all know this, right? So what happens? Because we cleave unto their ways. What do our people start doing? Because we cleaved on to them, some of our people are going to be like, look, hey, if they can get away with it, if they can get away with shooting a bunch of people in the church and then getting taken to Burger King after that, I can get away with it too. We got to we gotta stop envying our oppressors and choose none of his ways. Go ahead. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18, and verse 3. Yeah. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do and after the doings of the land of canaan whether i bring you shall ye not do neither shall ye walk in their ordinances so we in the, we in this land of uh, spiritual egypt so to speak and it's all of these ways that you observe in the heathens do such as the uh the sexual immorality uh they love children you know in a uh, in a sexual way in an ungodly way, in an ungodly way. Right. uh they, they murderers you know, and all type of abominable things they do, man with man, uh, men dressing like women. Hey, man, hey, forget about the animals. They love they, animals. They like to go into animals, man. And that's that's permitted uh, in their laws. But we can't, we got to see these things and observe the time, man. These people are doing things that's contrary to the Most High God. These things, if an Israelite man or woman participate in them, they will destroy you, man. Hey, and we got to stop... To, to, my conclusion is that, uh, which you haven't, if you haven't already known, we got to stop doing what the other people, or the other nations that are around us do. 
and we got to come back to the laws of the Most High God because his way is life and their way is death. They will tell you to follow after what feels good. Follow after what you think is right and will lead you straight to death and to have no life in it, right? The only thing you will be seeking and learning is your pleasure instead of what pleases the Most High God, right? All right. Hey, can we, let's keep going on that. Come here. Let's keep going on that. So let's go to Second Thessalonians. Hey, somebody give me Revelation. Malachi, give me Revelation 18 and 4 too. We cannot forget about Revelation 18 and 4 because it talks about America's sins and it tells us to stop doing what they're doing. All right, go ahead. Second Thessalonians. Okay. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Bring it out. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for the day shall not come except there be a falling away first uh -huh. and that man of sin be revealed and we know who this man of sin is talking about who is being revealed because in the next verse it, it gives us more details on this man of sin right who goes around the whole earth acting like this go ahead man of sin be revealed the son of perdition uh -huh. who uh, oh, sorry. who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Bruh, and this is simple. The white people do that. They go around the earth claiming to be God by their actions, man. They go around the earth to country to country telling them what they can and can't do. They go around to these countries saying, you have to accept Pepsi and, uh, and Frito-Lay and Cheeto. You have to accept, you have to accept our currency. We didn't see so many presidents get knocked off because they simply said, we do not want the American currency. Hey, look what happened to Gaddafi when he tried to make it a uh, currency about gold. They knocked him off fast, man. Why? Because he was in Africa where the majority of the gold was. And they're like, nah, we're God. We're the God on this earth. We're the one that's going to set the, the currency in order. Right? And now people are slowly starting to dump the American dollar because they see that the so called white man is that man of sin. They see that. Everybody sees the cat is out the bag. Everybody sees the white man for how wicked he really is. Straight up, go ahead. Hey, I'm gonna touch on that too real quick. Hey, they see that the cat is out of the bag and they've exposed his hand. They lifted up his skirt, thus said the Bible. Right, where you got Vladimir Putin showing that Christ is actually black on national TV. So this whole time they've been lying? Right. This whole time you've been lying about Christ? Right. Being a white man? Right. right, where Vladimir Putin is showing that Christ is actually a black man? What else have you been lying about? Right. What else have you lied about, right? We're starting to see that you are the liar, right? Your people is the liar. And we gotta stop, we gotta come and learn what the Bible is actually saying, right? Why does the Bible actually reveal Christ and all the prophets being black? And, and all the pictures that we have here in America or in Oklahoma, that they're white. Why is Christ white? This is a big problem, man, this is a question. It says, who opposes and exalted himself above that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showeth himself that he is God. Right, and it, it helps us, in the book of Obadiah, it actually helps us, and it said that Esau is the one that showed, that exalted himself as God. Look at it, uh, Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 4. The so-called white man, the Caucasus white man, the Caucasian, he the one that acts like he's God around the earth. Here it is, he got the most problems when it comes to burning up in the sun. Hey, all of the, hey, <laughs> he got so many problems, but he the one that's opposing himself as God, man. Ain't that crazy? That's crazy how the white man want to be God. Nobody else does that but the white man. Right, go ahead. This is Jeremiah 49, verse 9. Bring it out. If grape gatherers come to thee, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? Uh -huh. If thieves by night, they will destroy it till they have enough. Right, and that's the white man. And he give me, he's like, when somebody break in your house, when somebody break in your vineyard, yeah, they gonna take as much as they can, but they gonna leave something behind. Don't nobody break in your house and take every single thing in the house. They take the goods, but Esau, when he break in, he takes everything. In fact, he even leaves a military base there so that he can keep taking. Yeah, he, exactly. Like the captain said, he'll take your land, your name, and putting patents on all the things that you created, that's what he do. And we're coming out here to expose that because guess what? The American people are too afraid to stand up. 
So the most I put it on our spirit for our people to stand up and expose this devil for who he is, man. And that's just what it is. Man, woman, and child, man. The most I has a great judgment coming to you. What's up?